going to be interesting. I'm, I'm anxious to get out amongst it. I can't believe you guys wore your actual scouting clothes in the vehicle. I think it's important. And we should stress to the viewers that well, you're not, you're not going to want to put your clothes on until you get to your spot. Right. Set. Well, we're on a piece of river bottom public land this this evening. <laughs> yeah, we're on a river bottom piece of public land this evening, and we're coming in here with one goal, I guess, and that's to kind of scout around the standing cornfield. This piece doesn't have a lot of timber on it. It's mostly just open ground, some willow bottoms down along the river. There's a couple fence rows with oaks in the middle of these fields, but I would say the cornfield takes up the most of this piece of public land. We know there's lots of deer in here. We've kind of hunted here in the past, scouted here in the past a little bit, but our main mission today is try to figure out where the highest concentration of deer is living on this cornfield. We've walked a really long way back here. The cool thing about this piece, it is a crop field, which we would generally not be drawn to, but it's so big that we can walk. How far do you think we are? Three quarters of a mile at least already? But there's two reasons we kind of assume that the deer would be further back here and why we beelined it to this spot is because this is kind of the first area where there's water. The main river channel is there. There's another drainage ditch right here and those kind of meet in this corner down here. All the way up there that creek's dried up, all the little ponds are dried up so we just kind of beelined it to this spot. We're already finding deer sign but the main mission is just to figure out where the deer are entering and exiting this cornfield so we can either set up on that or hunt you know the bedding areas around the corn or what would likely be a willow bedding area so we're gonna get walking along here jake heard a deer get up somewhere in there so maybe we'll bump back into him later Right now I'm walking on a fence row and when we're looking at this cornfield on the map, you know, it can be intimidating to think about scouting a standing cornfield. What we're looking for when we're looking at the map is a couple different things. One, any type of change in the cornfield. So if you're looking at a sea of corn, it's hard to, you know, pick a specific spot. But if you're looking at maybe a waterway or a fence row, maybe a pond with tall grass, really any change in that field to break up what is, you know, typically just a sea of corn. That's where we're gonna kind of target where these deer are. The other thing that's kind of pointing us in the, the right direction, I guess, is where this water is. Corn's dry, when deer are feeding on corn, it's, you know, gonna dry their mouth out, so they're gonna go to water. A lot of times they'll be bedded around a pond, or in this instance, the rivers down here and this little creek channel. We got up here into one of the little oak, I guess, patches. It's a very, very small little oak patch, maybe half acre. Yeah. And there's a lot of white oaks, just a good mixture of oaks in general. But I actually hunted back here one time along the river down on a crossing with Sean. And we didn't think that the deer were bedding up here. I think maybe just that day they weren't bedding in here because right now we're finding a lot of beds in what looks to be a big buck bed right here fresh droppings in it. You can tell where some of this vegetation has been browsed off. Right over here, over my left shoulder, is the beginning of that cornfield. And that just acts as a barrier. It's super hard walking through there. As you might have seen, we were crawling through all kinds of tall grass to get around this spot and get all the way back here. With that cornfield, it's just kind of a, a wall. Not a lot of people are coming through standing corn. I think that might be why they're bedding out here, but they're definitely doing it more than they were that year that this was bean. So. I think as long as that corn stays up, this could be a killer spot. This is sweet. 
yeah. Let's keep going. Let's see some more stuff and then try to bump into some nice bucks. I guess one other thing that we could say is like, you know, this is a a food source for these deer. You know, the, the oaks and the variety of oaks in here. There are a lot of white oaks, but there's also some red and, and pin oaks, but you know, this is a spot where they've got some variation in their diet. You know, it's not just corn. It's like they're bedding way out in the middle of a cornfield. You know, that's all they have to eat, but right here they've got corn, oaks, all this river bottom, you know, so much variety down there. But we just feel like this is a perfect little spot where a bunch of stuff comes together. I think they'll be in here this fall. here at a little bit different spot in the corn. We've got a fence row going straight south and we've got that little island where we just were with the oaks on it over this direction. There's this open gate here. The deer are using that to cut from this fence row to one of these two fields. Sean and I hunted back in here last year and saw some deer down this bottom. And we were set up down here by this pin oak hoping that the deer would come through this gate just set up on the ground. There was tons of rubs and scrapes going up through here, but this was beans up here. I think this year the, with the corn here, it's just gonna make the bucks more likely to be here in daylight. You know, they got that insulation with that corn. Not a lot of hunters are coming through that. To get back here, there's no easy path. There's, I mean, it's a mile and a quarter at least, and there's no good tractor path. The corn's really tight to these fence rows for the most part. Just kind of looking for these different habitat breaks we got a lot of things that come together here we got oaks maples corn river bottom corn i mean just all kinds of browse down in here all kinds of variation in the food source we're not anticipating like these deer moving a long distance during daylight the thing we like about this spot is that it has everything that the deer are going to need where they don't have to move more than 80 yards to get 10 different things that they want to eat and water which is all they really need to live yep and they're always in cover yep besides when they're kind of on these islands and they'll pass through these feeding on acorns we're assuming so that's where we plan on capitalizing on them. Womp. Shoot them. Right. Right. Right now we're transitioning from long section of this cornfield into this waterway that meets up with the river bottom down here. This is another area that we were looking at on the map. You know, I figure if there's a lot of deer here now, that they'll be here when we come here to hunt. Reason being is it's as dry as it's gonna be probably right now. They're probably gonna be concentrated close to this water back behind us. I think when we're talking about bucks being bedded in standing corn, they're not gonna be on the edge of a field like over here where we just came from, where there's probably gonna be a bunch of deer walking by them, like does earlier in the night coming out of this bottom, at least earlier in the year. They just, I don't think they like that stress of all the commotion of does no. and fawns going on around them. So like, at least what I've found in the past, it seems like those islands out in the middle of the corn, they're not necessarily bedded in the corn, but they're insulated all around them by it. Farming practices have changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, are, they're planting corn in narrow, more narrow rows, so deer aren't necessarily bedding in it as much when it was 30 inches wide or 30 in, inches right. wide. Like they could just fit in between it better, but right. it doesn't mean they're not bedding in those islands out there, like those secluded islands. Yeah, I mean, it's just like what I mentioned earlier, any change, you know, we're looking at a sea of corn, and if you're looking at a sea of corn as just one big bedding area, it can be intimidating, and it may seem really hard to find the deer. Well, it, it there is some, strategy to it. I mean, they're going to get lost if they run out in the middle of a cornfield. They, I mean, they can smell well, but like in the middle of a cornfield, they're just about as helpless, I'm assuming, as we are, yeah. you know, just going one direction. So they're going to use these things, these changes. Structure. Yeah. Think of it. Yeah. Think of it like a bass lake. You know, you're out there, you're making some casts. You're like, hey, there should be a smallmouth bass under that lone rock. 
cast there, boom, he's there. It's just like the buck. Is there anything yep. where it changes from being 10 feet tall and a constant ocean of it to something different? Well, let's walk over here. Let's kind of talk about our setup and how we would get there and then get out of this. Maybe run up to that bean field across the road if we can. See if we can scare some bucks away. Yeah. This is that waterway with the island behind us. The deer have corn, they've got their oaks, they've got all that browse, they've got everything they need down here. We could see a buck bedding up in here, kind of overlooking this whole thing with the wind at his back. So, to get away with hunting that, we're going to assume that buck is better than this fence row, facing down the hill into this opening. What we're going to do is we're going to come from the access that's way over there, we're going to come all the way down until we hit the edge of this waterway. Once we hit that edge, we're going to be exposed to any deer bedded looking into this little opening. So we'll cut into the corn about five yards, walk this edge, and honestly, we're gonna try to get to where we can just about shoot across that waterway. And luckily we got this canary grass or foxtail. What is this? This is foxtail? This is giant foxtail. We're gonna sit in this giant foxtail and we're gonna plop our butts down here. If we sit over here in these trees, there are good trees for tree stands over there. But those deer are likely just going to go right through the middle of this thing. They're going to go right down towards that river. They're not going to go towards those trees on the edge. They're going to stay in these isolated areas, at least during daylight. If there were a buck bedded under that tree, we're fully confident that we could get to this spot and set up right behind this grass, darn near being able to shoot across this whole waterway. So I think that's pretty much going to do it for our scouting. I think we got three really good spots. I think they're where the deer are highly concentrated back here in a vast standing cornfield. We're going to get out of here. Thanks for watching. If you guys got any corn questions, you know, send or us answers. a message or answers. If you guys got cool stuff that you're talking about with your buddies that's corn related, bring up some ideas, you know. We're always open to thinking more about different strategies out here. Until next time, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you we'll see you sometime here in this cornfield during season.